little bear. Hi, Tony. Hi, getting on. You all right? Good. That's nice to hear. Yeah, it's been an all right week. We've been reading some nice books this week, haven't we? Yes. Hey, Tony, do you want to hear a joke? What's the fiercest flower in the garden? A tiger. Lily. Welcome. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to have to sit you down a minute, Tony. Let's pop you on here. You like sitting on here. You like being high up. Welcome back to Books with Beth and Tony Tanka. Now, Tony, I've got a book today. Are you going to like it? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure about this. I'm hoping you're going to like it because I like it. But are you going to like it, Tony? It's about a lion. Do you like it? He said you'll come around to the idea of reading this book today. That's good, Tony, because we are going to read it. This book is by Rachel Bright and it's illustrated by Jim Field and it's called The Lion Inside. On the front cover, we've got a lion and we've got a mouse. Let's go. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold, stood a mighty flat rock, all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was ever so tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him ever at all. Hello? He got trod on and sat on and missed out for stuff, ignored and forgotten. Yes, mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was lion o'clock. Mm. Oh my goodness, look at that hair. I'd love to know what he uses to make his hair that shiny. This huge, toothsome creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could. Roar! What's that, Tony? You can roar much better than that lion. He was head of the pack. He was shouty and tough. He loved showing the crowd he was made of strong stuff. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only I thought mouse, I could be more like that. Then, late one dark night in his mini mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He jumped from the covers and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse with the weenie squeak was a little more grrr and a little less meek? He's practising in the mirror. He's practising his roar. Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in. And life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse, I must find out how. I will learn how to roar, and I will learn it now. But, gulp, oh my gosh, there was only one beast who could teach him this thing, but might make him a feast. It was time to be strong, take a chance, after all. Forever was such a long time to feel small. So he made himself brave, and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top. Hoping not to be dinner. <gasps> it felt like the scariest thing he could do. But if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The further he climbed, the closer he got to the slumbering lion reclining on top. 
Then at last, as he stood on his tippity toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. <gasps> Gulp! Hen! Pardon me! Wake up, Mr. Lion! You've got company. Mm, squeak, Mr. Lion. What I've come to you for is squeak. Do you think you could teach me your roar? Tiny mouse looks next to the lion. What is he going to do? <gasps> wow. A silence befell the twinkling plane. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time slowed right down. Why, it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and let out a eek. The lion was shaking, his paws all a fumble. He was backing away with a scrambling tumble. Don't hurt me, he whimpered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, my goodness, this lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse peeped. I'm a friend, not a foe. Let's rock this together. We'll have fun, don't you know? That was a magical moment, for sure. When Mouse didn't feel at all small anymore, he had found his true voice and learned to speak out. And for that, you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked that rock better. Now that rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head. And lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Yes, that day they both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside. There we are at the end. I've got a list of some great activities. Wait. Where's Tony? Tony! Tony! What you doing there? What you hiding for? You silly tiger. Now the lion was very good at doing his big roar. It's a good skill that he has got. I'd like you to have a think about what good skill you have got and how can you help others by using that skill perhaps. The mouse goes on his journey and he's very courageous because he wants some help and even though he looks quite frightened, he's walking through the deep dark forest, he's still carrying on and being brave because he knows that he would like some help. How can we channel our inner mouse for courage? Some things that you might like to do. You could make some courage tokens, little tokens about that big. You could make some out of clay. You could work together to make some with your mummy and daddy and they could give them you when they think you are being courageous and being brave. You could carry it to give you courage in your pocket. You could also make a courage jar with quotes and nice little words that you think you could read if, if you are worried and you would like to be a bit more courageous. You could just take one and keep hold of it. Maybe put that in your pocket as well. You could make a courageous chart and write down the things that you might be worried about with your mummy and daddy and then talk it through how you can be brave, how they can help you and you can help each other. Remember that we are all fearful but we are also all strong and clever. But it is how we use these for good and to help others that makes us who we are. So, if you are thinking about how you can help other people to be a bit more courageous, you could encourage them to keep trying and keep going with whatever they're stuck with. You could just be there for them and be a good friend. You could remember that nothing starts out easy. You've just got to keep going with it. You could take a big, deep breath and remember that a mistake isn't a failure because you are still learning something new. Everybody in the whole wide world is continuing to learn and make mistakes 
every single day. Included me and Tony. Isn't that right? Yep, that's right. Thanks so much for reading The Lion Inside with me and Tony today. I think you came around to it in the end, didn't you, Tony? He's going to find his inner lion and his inner mouse. Well, have a lovely day. Please remember to like and comment and subscribe. Share this around. If you're enjoying Books with Beth, let me know. Come and chat to me. We're happy to talk, aren't we, Tony? But other than that, we will see you next Wednesday for our next book. Bye-bye.